my Kako. Welcome to our fourth episode of Energy Justice in Hawaii. I'm your host, Ali Andrews. Uh, I also run a community solar company called Shake Energy Collaborative. And I have the honor of uh, being joined today by two guests. Uh, one uh, guest uh, is uh, Todd Yamashita, the president of Ho'ahu Energy Cooperative Molokai, uh, which uh, I have the great honor of working with on a CBRE project, a community-based renewable energy project, first community-owned community, -owned community uh, solar project uh, on Molokai, maybe in the state. Um, and our second guest is Sebastian Salar. Uh, who is a uh, graduate student at the University of Hawaii at Manoa in the Department of Urban Planning, uh, getting his master's. Also uh, a community energy planner at Shake Energy Collaborative. Um, and today we have the honor of hearing from both of them about this really cool new concept uh, around holistic evaluation of renewable energy projects. So not just looking at the bottom line of what's the absolute cheapest, what can we get for the fewest dollars per watt, let's plug it in, let's go, uh, but give a, a more a, a holistic view of what does this project cost, uh, both our environment, our society, uh, uh, communities outside of our state, um, as well as like what are, what are the holistic benefits beyond just dollars saved, but uh, jobs created. Um, uh, empowered communities, generational wealth, um, uh, cultural alignment. Um, that's a little preview of what we're going to talk about today, um, but I uh, want to get into hearing from our guests. So I'm going to start with Sebastian first. Uh, Sebastian, can you give us a little bit of an intro about you beyond what I just shared? Um, and then tell us a little bit about uh, your, your research team and what you guys were, were looking to do in your class last semester. Yeah, thank you so much, Ali. Um, so my origins, I suppose, are here on Oahu. Um, I call Kaneohe home. Um, I did my undergraduate studies in electrical mechanical engineering, knowing that I wanted to make renewable energy my research focus. Um, but coming out of college, I also had the opportunity to become a Peace Corps volunteer. Um, and really from start to finish, uh, there was this growing realization that um, our climate mitigation and adapt adaptation strategies were really gonna be rooted in the community. Um, and so when uh, COVID <laughs> came along and I got evacuated from my Peace Corps service and found myself back home on Oahu, uh, and started uh, taking courses at uh, UH Manoa. Um, I got inspired by some feminist energy systems research, uh, which is a research framework that looks at how do we do a clean and just energy transformation, but with particular attention to systems of power, systems of oppression, um, and how energy benefits and burdens are being distributed. Um, across our society. Um, and to the benefit of myself and my research partner, Leila Kilolu, a PhD student in the Department of Urban and Regional Planning at UH, um, together we had the great fortune of uh, meeting up with you and, and Todd and the others at the Ho'ahu Energy Cooperative Molokai to, to really hone in on, you know, how do we make this transition a reality. Um, yeah. Thanks, Sebastian. Um, uh, yeah, that was a really exciting time uh, to hear from you and uh, Layla and uh, um, hear you guys approach the co-op and wanted to do a, a research project uh, in collaboration and then my benefit uh, the co-op. Uh, enter Todd. Todd, can you tell us a little bit about like what you guys were thinking about when you when you first I remember there was a lot of like brainstorming of ideas of what what could we ask this cool research group to do how did you guys what kind of ideas did you come up with and how did you focus on this particular idea that you wanted them to, to look at 
Sure. So, you know, for, for us, um, you, you know, and, and just to kind of reiterate where, where we're coming from here on Molokai, um, uh, you know, I, I'm not an energy expert by any means. And taking on this project, this uh, community solar project, this is something that we're doing on, the, on behalf of our people. Uh, it's something that we have to do in order to survive. And, um, and, and so lucky us, you know, we, we, we are surrounded by um, energy experts such as uh, each of you and, um, and what you guys have been able to bring to the table for us. And, you know, getting to meet with uh, Sebastian and, and his team, you know, uh, here on Molokai, we take all we can get. And um, not for once do we think, oh, you know, these are just, uh, you know, a couple of university students and, uh, you know, what can they do for us? Right away, um, it was a two-way conversation. It wasn't about um, uh, necessarily what, what we wanted uh, specifically, um, but it was more of a conversation on um, where are things now? What is the status quo in terms of uh, energy projects? How do we understand them? Um, how do we make sense of the details? And then as a community, um, you know, how, is, how can we interact? You know. With these with these projects um, that are obviously going to be built in and around our communities, increasingly so as as we continue our renewable energy build out, and so that was the uh, the beginning of our conversation uh, that we started with with Sebastian, and uh, and 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 like you had mentioned, Sebastian uh, about the uh, feminist energy structure and whatnot. What we realized is that um, you know being an indigenous people on Molokai um, and, and really being on the, on the fringes of uh, this new energy revolution that we're seeing and, and not really getting a good taste of it. Um, we needed to understand what this was in terms of who we are as a people uh, out here on Molokai. And so Sebastian was, uh, and his team have, have been great help and uh, had, had been great help in helping us understand that. And, and we're continuing to work together and have even uh, more things to share about. Thanks, Todd. Um, yeah, I think that was a, I, I think uh, in particular, in, in my perspective, coming from, uh, as you said, an Indigenous people looking at not only just receiving project uh, proposals from the outside, but actually submitting a project proposal, a grassroots project pro proposal and being evaluated alongside some of these larger external projects that have kind of an sometimes an extractive nature to them, looking at the evaluation, like how those projects are selected, how we value them, uh, uh, creating a new framework for that uh, feels, feels really important. Like in thinking about creating this new system in which communities are evaluated, community-led projects are evaluated alongside some more external and sometimes more corporate feeling, extractive feeling projects. What were some of the things that you remember like uh, asking Sebastian to, to look at in terms of this new like, evaluation? Sure. So, um, you, you know, just, just real basically, um, just, just look at equipment, for instance. Um, the cheapest battery isn't necessarily the best battery. Uh, here on Molokai, you know, we take our environmental, our, you know, our environment really seriously. Um, it's bad enough that we're importing diesel all day, every day uh, to burn, to make electricity here. Um, and the fact that this project requires batteries, you know, we really wanted to be sensitive uh, to our, our people, uh, to our environment in terms of, uh, you know, what these batteries are made of. And, and really one of the things we found out right away was that, um, you know, everything is geared towards uh, building these projects fast and cheap and, you know, as a community uh, on the other side of things, um, we're often faced with uh, fast and cheap isn't always the best. A lot of times the fast and cheap doesn't come with consent. And so uh, we end up with these energy projects that while they might be really new and tech actually technologically amazing, um, they might not necessarily be the best fit. And so what we're what I was thinking was, you know, we look at these requests for proposals, we look at the metrics by which they're measured. And what we realized was that, you know, the, these projects are being kind of created a little bit in a, in a silo. 
Um, they're, be create, they're being created for energy experts um, and they're being created for energy developers. And so, you know, we kind of want to break into this. Like, is there a way to help the everyday person, like people on Molokai, to understand what these projects are, to understand what's in these batteries? Um, and, and just like we're able to, you know, look at a scorecard in terms of uh, the te technological aspects, right? All, all of the different uh, things that the batteries do and, and whatnot. Um, why can't we see something just as simple that tells us where they come from and what their impacts are? Um, and, and overall, in the, in the bigger idea, it's the same thing with these RFPs. You know, you have a 500 to 800 page, just bunch of paperwork. Um, that for the average person, you know, this, this is, is, it's Greek. And um, if, if renewable energy is something that we all want to embrace, if it's something that we, we, um, we need to get excited about in order to get behind it and do it, this is something that we need to understand. Um, it, it, it's, it's, and, and so I, I'm hoping that my work with Sebastian We've got a couple of different ideas, but you know everything from infographics to, to different types of scorecards, um, and even down to the criteria by which these projects are are, are judged by, you know that are given points by that, um, you know that these projects are passed by. Um, you know, let's look at different metrics. Our our communities need to be heard. They need to be upfront in these processes, and so when you see metrics for these projects that talk about um, you know, community uh, engagement and whatnot. Like, let's stick deep into that. Like, what does that mean? Does that mean that we had a Zoom call once 10 years ago and we talked about electricity? Um, we we want to define that, you know? We, we, I know our group has engaged probably over a thousand hours in different types of, you know, community meetings and uh, educational kinds of stuff. And, you know, so that's, we're looking for real commitments um, you know, real metrics. And so, um, yeah, I just really excited about some of the ideas that have come out of that. And, and one of the things we found out is it's not easy um, to find out what these metrics should be because it's, it's kind of new, new area, it's new territory. And so, you know, I, I like to say that, you know, with all the ingenuity that's being done, uh, you know, in engineering, in this renewable energy space, uh, there's a lot of geeky, exciting and amazing stuff. Um, however, I, I think the real ingenuity needs to be applied so that I guess the, the rest of us can, um, can feel like we can understand what renewable energy is so that we know who it's for, we know who it's benefiting. And I, and I think that in understanding that process, um, you'll find that um, these communities will begin hopefully building equity for themselves, like our community is, you know, trying to get into some of these projects, trying to win some of these projects. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, a, a really great goalpost. I wanted to back up a little bit for some of our viewers who might not be as savvy with how energy, uh, how the energy industry uh, decides and builds infrastructure. We kind of dove right into the meat. I forgot to uh, back up with what is an RFP? Um, mm -hmm. A quick uh, explanation for those on the call who are not familiar with that acronym. Uh, a request for proposals is how the utility, uh, Hawaiian Electric, uh, procures, selects uh, which projects that they will buy power from. Uh, they're usually a pretty uh, formal, rigid um, uh, process. Uh, with very specific criteria, uh, as Todd mentioned, super long uh, sets of documents that you have to follow all the details in, and you're kind of graded to this uh, really object, uh, objective, yes, objective uh, set of metrics. Um, it often has to do a lot with price, but there are a few other things that they consider in there as well. Um, and then uh, the co-op, uh, Ho'ahu, Todd, and his guys asked uh, Sebastian and his team to look at that, kind of rethink it. What does it look like um, uh, to create different metrics in there, as well as all the other things Todd just talked about? Um, so Sebastian, tell us, like, how did you feel when you first got that uh, um, direction from the co-op? And uh, kind of what did you learn, what surprised you along the way digging into that material? 
Um, yeah, I think uh, our team initially looked towards the United Nations and how they were trying to approach, you know, a holistic understanding of sustainable development. Um, and so the United Nations has 17 sustainable development goals that um, lays kind of like a, a base, a baseline for uh, certain metrics to be gathered. Um, and then Hawaii Green Growth here uh, in Hawaii created the Aloha Plus Challenge, which was a kind of retranslation of the SDG, um, the, the Sustainable Development Goals into a, a Hawaii context. And so what myself, Layla, and, and our third teammate, uh, Ryan Neville, who just graduated with his master's in electrical engineering, uh, what we came up with was a scorecard that was even more specific to Molokai. Um, and we kind of did some work to get some initial metrics into that scorecard. Um, but we soon realized that the issue was not so much into what we knew, but what we didn't know. Um, and so a variety of cultural metrics um from uh you know how people related to energy development in terms of cultural and natural resource management um to the ecological health um of the coral reefs um kind of a whole spectrum of what energy development means um for a community here in Hawaii so there's an indigenous aspect um, there's a lot of cultural and spiritual values that are intertwined with land use. Um, and so really, I, I think knowledge is power and the decision makers uh, uh, on the state side and the private side and the civil society side, um, they, they're all doing great work, but kind of operating on different wavelengths a lot of the time. And so Hopefully, these this evolu uh, evolving scorecard, uh, this evolution of metrics, um, will improve everyone's capacity to 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 work together and collaborate despite despite cross epistemological boundaries um, or cross you know uh, prioritization um, around different cash flows, for example. Um, and and then there's just like that technological aspect. And, and so I think that's the main thing that we learned is that this energy discussion is usually dominated about how is the technology evolving? How are the economics evolving? Um, but what we found is that the, the solution, um, well, the, the reality and solutions to how this transformation towards clean and just energy systems, um, these solutions can be found on the ground. Um, and it, it really has its roots in addressing the human rights aspect of development. Um, and ultimately, getting that community buy-in, um, I think, is quintessential to actual sustainable outcomes for renewable energy um, as we move forward. Awesome. I'm curious, coming from like a formal education in a more like traditional engineering uh, um, uh, academic silo, maybe not a silo, maybe uh, your academic was more open minded. Um, but I'm curious, was anything uh, surprising hearing input from the community about how they wanted to value projects or, or see projects built? Did anything feel uh, particularly uh, hard to incorporate into like a, a scorecard um, of that variety? Um, I don't think anything was terribly surprising. I, I think our team went into this with a pretty good sense of, of how the current energy system was, in, was deficient in some ways especially in considering more, you know, nuanced aspects of this development effort. Um, but one thing that I think is going to continue to be challenging 
is really capturing um, the non-human value, uh, perhaps spiritual value, or just like intrinsic value in terms that can really show its significance in the health of the broader ecosystem, its significance in the overall health and well-being of the society that lives in that place. Um, because I truly believe that those, you know, perhaps, perhaps ineffable even uh, factors do play a significant role um, in, you know, a, a thriving um, society and, and communities. Um, so capturing externalities of the power system in a way that is being expressed in a language that is pragmatic and useful for folks who, who maybe need to operate with dollar signs, um, but also in a way that doesn't betray the true uh, essence of what we're trying to protect ultimately. Um, and there's also this train of thought of where if you put a dollar sign, you know, on something sacred, that could mean that, okay, now we know its value and we can protect it. But it also means that someone who has enough money can buy it out and then owns permission to destroy that sacred thing. Right. So um, there's a lot of different uh, things to consider when designing good metrics so that they don't um, uh, so they don't get kind of like co-opted and abused down the line. Um, yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, a huge challenge and super commend you guys for digging into that uh, challenge. Uh, Todd, I'm curious, uh, now that, you know, the first phase uh, of their project, they, they, they produced a draft uh, holistic energy scorecard. Uh, how do you feel about like how that uh, kind of evaluation might be used? How, how could that impact uh, the equitable outcomes for energy on Molokai? How do, you, how do you hope that that will go forward in the world? I think if any time that you have um, your local population that can understand something that's really complex in, a, in, in an easy way, um, that's access. That's access to information, and information is power. And you know, I, I'm excited that our community, um, you know, through this process, um, won't just understand what these projects are, um, but but the other way around too. That that the rest of Hawaii will understand a little bit more about Molokai, you know, what, what it is that Molokai um, treasures, what's important to us in that process. And that being said, you know, what we're doing here on Molokai is, is, is not just for us here on Molokai. We're, we have connected to people in Waianae, people in Kohuku and elsewhere in Hawaii. We have an ongoing conversation like we're having here about energy justice. And these other communities are really excited about these metrics too. Um, you know, this, this is something that I think all of us in Hawaii, if you're a community member, has, has really been dealing with, you know, forever, is um, these really large um, projects. And, and I'm not just talking about energy. It could be landfills, you know, any other big kind of dominating, um, you know, environmentally effect, you know, affecting projects like this. Um, it's, it's always been really difficult to understand um, how these interact with the community. And, and a lot of the time, the community is left at the very end. Um, you know, there's a little bit of consultation saying, hey, this is what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. You know, very rarely are we asked, uh, is this OK? Do we have permission? Uh, um, you know, uh, ha have we created a project that, that uh, helps to satisfy the needs of your community? Um, have we reduced the impacts to your community as much of, as possible? You know, and if you're hiding the community towards the very end of that process, it's, 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 going, it's not going to be good. Um, and I think we've seen examples of that over and over again. So 
Yes, this is exciting for us here on Molokai, but it's also exciting, I, I think, for the rest of Hawaii. And um, you know, I, that just got, and I just want to kind of like put it in a nutshell. You know, the idea is that the sun shines on on everybody, um, and and it and I love that because you know, energy justice is it should be the same way. There, there should be no difference between how any one of us uh, has access to energy, receives energy, understands energy. Um, you know, I, I think we need to kind of level that playing field a little bit. And I, I just really excited that this is, this is what's happening. And, and Sebastian, thank you for making the, those, these things happen. I feel, I feel the same way, Todd. I feel like that was a great uh, um, wrap up. I was gonna ask you for takeaways, but you just nailed it. Um, uh, Sebastian, in 30 seconds, can you tell us uh, where you're headed next with this work? For sure. Um, so I think, you know, uh, there's many different ongoing directions that are that's progressing um, this work forward. Uh, one, as Todd mentioned, is how can we bring energy justice to Oahu and, and communities you know, across the state and hopefully one day across the world who, who really want to take ownership and alleviate uh, the pains around energy. Um, but another effort is really digging down into um, how these different energy stakeholders and actors are communicating. Uh, what are those channels of communication and, and how can we improve those especially now in a climate that seems very ready for those kinds of changes. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Can't wait to follow that work as it progresses. Um, Todd and Sebastian, thank you so much for joining us on Energy Justice in Hawaii. Um, uh, super great to hear from you guys.